Here we are with my newest book, Fire Burn and Cauldron Bubble. I love this because uh, it's a hardback book. It's like a proper book. And uh, this book I've edited, which means I've chosen the poems in this book, which means I didn't write all of them. The other books, like The Crocodile in the House and The Football Book, I wrote every single poem in those books. In this book, there are some of my poems, which I'll read in a moment, but lots of other people's poems as well. In fact, some of you will probably know that the uh, title, Fire Burn and Cauldron Bubble, is from a very famous poet and playwright, a man called Mr. William Shakespeare. And if you've done Macbeth at school, you know the Song of the Witches. And we thought that would be a great title for this book. And I love this poem. In fact, in another session, I'm going to show you how to write your own magical potion. So look out for that. Anyway, this is Song of the Witches from Macbeth by Mr. William Shakespeare. Double, double, toil and trouble, fire burn and cauldron bubble, fillet of a fenny snake, in the cauldron boil and bake, eye of newt, toe of frog, wool of bat and tongue of dog, adder's fork, blind worm sting, lizard's leg, owlet's wing, for a charm of powerful trouble, like a hell broth, boil and bubble, double, double, Toil and trouble, fire burn and cauldron bubble. Cool it with a baboon's blood. And then the charm is firm and good. And that's a great poem to read out loud, to chant out loud. So in this book, lots of poems about magic. And the first one I'm going to read is uh, about a wizard. And I've called him Wizzo McWizard and his amazing creations. And maybe you could think about what potions, what spells you would create if you were a wizard? And who would you cast them on? What would you do to your brother or your sister or your dog or your mum or your dad or your teacher? But then I thought, maybe the wizard, he's an inventor as well. He can make things and create things. So this is called Wizzo McWizard's Amazing Creations. Self-cleaning socks for long-distance runners. Self-cooling sandals for steaming hot summers. Bed socks for dogs. Pillows for cats. Spring-loaded XSX strength cricket bats. Self-inflating life-saving knickers. Pulpits with engines for overworked vicars. All these and more magic sensations. Wizz home at wizards, amazing creations. Bananas and oranges fitted with zips. Healthy calorie-free fish and chips. Centrally heated, warm toilet seats. Non-flavour fading, non-shrinking sweet sweets. A homework computer that fits in the pocket. Football boots with the power of a rocket. Spells and inventions, magic sensations with Wizzo McWizard's amazing creations. Sprockets and sockets and test tubes that boil. Wires and fires and foil and oil. Springs that go zing and things that uncoil. Hubble, bubble, trial and toil. Jottings and workings with odd calculations. Diagrams labelled with weird notations. Models that move with the strangest rotations. Uttering mutterings and strange incantations. A potion to send your teacher to sleep. A lotion that makes grandas hair like a sheep. A tablet to take to turn sister blue. A pill to prescribe for a sick cockatoo. A spell you can tell to shut up your brother. A chant to encant to silence your mother. A word that's absurd that freezes up time. A magical pencil to make each poem rhyme. Line after 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 line. Line after line of magic sensations. Wizzo McWizard's amazing creations. Lots of poems were sent in about magical creatures like unicorns or dragons and then uh, magical spells and witches and wizards and broomsticks and uh, elves and goblins and things like that. And there were several about magic carpets. Now, if you've seen films like Aladdin or read stories like that, those magic carpets will take you on adventures. And it might be that you could write your own poem about where you would go on a magic carpet. 
okay? Where would that magic carpet take you to? But I decided to write one about a carpet that was magical that didn't go anywhere. And in a way, the last word in this poem is probably the most important word in the poem. This is called the magic kitchen carpet. And I was thinking of some children playing in the kitchen and all the things that are happening in the kitchen added and became the stories. There's an old and tattered carpet upon the kitchen floor, weather beaten, moth eaten, just behind the door. It's colour drained and food stained, it's shabby and it's torn. It's dead bare, it's threadbare, it's weathered and it's worn. On this tattered magic carpet, you can choose your destination, any wild adventure and any situation. When the cooking's hot and bubbling, we're somewhere hot and tropical. When wearing granny's glasses, we're somewhere microscopical. If the ironing is steaming, we're deep in the Sahara, or silly circus clowns with mum's lipstick and mascara. If the washer overflows, we're in shark-infested seas. When the freezer door is open, we're in an arctic breeze. Or rockets flying high in space. If mum does the hoovering, if she rearranges furniture, we are warplanes out manoeuvring. Assorted jars and bottles mean experiments and science. And when dad leaves his wellies there, we're in the land of giants. The ticking of the toaster is a robot that is sleeping. An alien attack when the microwave is beeping. On this tattered magic carpet, you can choose your destination. For nothing's quite as magical as your